Welcome to the Audi Garage. If you're new here, these videos document what I do on about a weekly basis, and I'll take you guys along for the ride to show you some unique and interesting things that I do that hopefully entertains you. So it's actually Tuesday, my week starts off pretty boring. I usually just do some paperwork and the boring business side of stuff. I did get to work on the V8 car a little bit yesterday to try to diagnose the really frustrating power steering problem. I did realize that the supply line that the shop that initially had done this swap had set up was just the nub of a pressure line cut off. So the feed or the supply to the pump was very, very tiny. So what I did is this morning, Tuesday morning, is I went and grabbed the proper uh, A6 4.2 supply line. It's way fatter. It fits perfectly onto the A4 reservoir with the 1.8. Uh, so no problems there, buttoned it up, uh, no leaks, still lines. So I haven't driven around that much yet, but I'll let it settle. Fluid might just be so aerated that it's gonna take a while for it to calm down essentially. And right now, what I'm gonna be working on is a bench flash harness for the 4.2 car. Again, because unfortunately the tuner is having difficulty flashing the ECU through the car's OBD2 part. So what I'm gonna do is make a bench flash setup so that there's no issues or excuses as to why it can't flash. Once that's done, I can finally get an e-test for the car and we can start driving it around daily. Because right now, there's not really anything wrong with it other than the power steering, and I need the flash to successfully pass the e-test. So here you can see what I'm working with to make the bench flash setup. I have an OBD2 port cut out of an old Jetta. I have the hacked engine harness from the original 4.2 car uh, that the shop completely and utterly mangled into oblivion. Two sets of body harness plugs, lots of splices and cuts, so I have no problem scrapping this. I've already cut off a bunch of connectors to use on the current engine harness to make that one super clean. So I'm going to basically be connecting this to this and then also using a cigarette adapter to run power. Usually it's nicer to have an adjustable power supply, but I don't mind just getting in a car, running it, and using that as a power supply. It's way easier. This is a couple bucks and I had it laying around and it's way simpler. And again, just a close up, this was the original power steering line that came on the engine. You can see that it's very tiny feed whereas the A6 one is actually all this about 5 eighths hose size all the way down to a crimp onto a larger port size. So fingers crossed that that uh, ends up working out for us. So as you can see, I have my bench flash setup completed. I have the OBD2 connector, the lines from the ECU. I use the cigarette power adapter because that's putting out about 14.4 volts when the truck is running. So it's a easy portable power supply now. And you can see on VCDS, if I check the ECU, it does in fact connect. So now we should be ready with no excuses to flash this. Fingers crossed. All right guys, hopefully you can hear me over the road noise and the TDI. Uh, we're headed to the dyno now. Uh, yesterday was kind of uh, Wasted it at the end there, had lots of trouble with the tuner, basically having terrible customer service and he failed at uploading the tune onto the V8 ECU after I boot motored it. So it's extremely frustrating dealing with this guy, uh, I've never dealt with him before, this is the first time. But yeah, we're going to the dyno, it's the black car that I had done some work on to correct the inlets in the previous video. So he had dynoed, if you saw in the last video, he had went to the dyno on the way back from my vacation. And now we're going back again. He's done some revisions to his tune and we're gonna see what it makes. Hopefully there's no mechanical issues that pop up, but if there is, hopefully I'll be able to help out with that and get it running right. But uh, we'll pick this back up when we're back at the dyno. So it's Friday. I didn't uh, manage to take any video or decent pictures really of the dyno on Wednesday there. Uh, but if you check out my Facebook and Instagram, you'll be able to see some videos and pictures. Basically, it was super su successful. Uh, we ended the day with 460 wheel horsepower and 452 foot-pounds of torque, which is super awesome. We're still trying to turn it up a little bit. We're maxing out the setup. Still no progress on the V8 uh, flash. Again, like I talked about in the last clip, terrible customer service. It's turning into a disaster. I've asked for my money back at this point and basically he wants one last chance or says he will flash it today. So if he doesn't, uh, that's gonna be a real issue and I will be going to the other tuner that I have ready to supply a flash. So far this morning, I went on a little parts run and to get a charger that I left at uh, my friend's house, Christian from Dominates, 
dominate tuning when we went to the dyno because I needed it today uh, because we have a car in the shop and obviously I need to flash the V8 ECU. So right now this is what we're working on. It's a fairly bone stock B5 S4. Uh, came in with only being able to run with the MAF unplugged uh, on a Bosch MAF. We, or he had purchased a Hitachi MAF through some confusion, unfortunately, um, working with someone else. So there was another person that tried to fix the whole setup, but that didn't work either. So now I've got it to do it correctly. And what we've done so far, what I've done so far is deep into the Bosch connector because it was destroyed. I have it right now temporarily hooked up to the uh, Hitachi adapter harness. Flashed got Dominate to uh, send me a tune to flash a stock file that'll run off the Hitachi MAF. So the car runs with the MAF plugged in now, which is great, but it's reading too high at idle. So my first inclination is to obviously run a boost leak test. And right now, uh, I'll give you kind of a preview of just how bad this can, can get on cars. And uh, unfortunately, this car, someone had tried to upload a stage 2 tune on it without probably doing uh, any tests or health checks before. So obviously, that's not going to work very well at all. So one of the first issues is if you're going to do something like a stage 2 tune or any tuning on a car, especially an S4, you have to do a boost leak test. So as you can hear, I'm cranking up the regulator, but... I'm getting basically absolutely no movement on the gauge. Any other car that would immediately start climbing, uh, that's healthy and buttoned up. So we found the issue, heard a ton of noise coming down from the intercooler, and this is what I found. The complete end tank is blown off, so I will have to chuck on a used one that I have and go from there. But uh, yeah, that'll happen. These ones definitely don't last. Here's another good find on this car from whoever worked on it last. The map sensor was just seated into the throttle body boot. There wasn't even the one-time use clamp or any sort of uh, small hose clamp. So that was obviously a huge leak. Uh, I put on some used older clamps, which I don't really like doing, but we just want to get this done and it's going to be pulled apart anyways after. So on the lobster claws, clamps down there, that seemed to fix that. Uh, intercoolers are now replaced, so hopefully this will be one of the last leaks and uh, we'll continue on. We're also going to possibly put an exhaust on the car, uh, depending on what I have in stock right now. So a little status update on this car. Fixed all the boost leaks, uh, added the clamp there, uh, replaced the intercoolers. There is a small leak at the F-hose connection down here that I need to uh, take one more look at, but we might need a new F-hose to fix that. The remaining issues are there is sometimes some misfires that come up on cylinder 1 and 5. So I've done new spark plugs, uh, copper BKR7s, because we're going to do a tune, hopefully, a stage 2 on this uh, by the time it leaves. And switched around some coil packs. Uh, that didn't seem to help, and then as the car warmed up, it started to uh, have zero misfire counts. So tomorrow I'm going to button this all back up, get it drivable, and take it out for some base logs to see how it performs under wide open throttle. The engine still does seem like it's kind of shaking at idle, which makes me think that it is still misfiring. It just might be misfiring too fast for VCDS to read maybe. I've heard of that being a possibility. So we will pick this up tomorrow and hopefully make some progress. I can't really remember where we left off yesterday but I was working, or the day before actually, I didn't film yesterday at all. I was still working on that S4, trying to figure out uh, the misfiring issue. If I hadn't said that, it has a misfiring issue. Uh, crazy amounts of misfires on cylinders two and five. Found a wiring issue on five. Uh, couldn't find anything on two. Swapped some coil packs, put in some ICMs, new spark plugs, the whole nine yards. Finally, checked the uh, timing uh, on VCDS, so in one of the measuring blocks you can go in and see the correction factor that the ECU is trying to uh, compensate for if the cams on each bank are a uh, sequence, should be within four correction factors or degrees, and uh, this one is out by 14, so unfortunately I have to pull the whole front end of that car off and completely reset the timing using a crank lock pin and the bar, the cam lock bar to make sure it's dead on. Uh, when that's done, I'll start the car, and fingers crossed, I don't have to open up the valve covers to make sure that the cam chain tensioners are timed correctly, because 
if I start the car and the correction factor is within spec, then we're good to go. And uh, that's what we're hoping is going to happen. I'll probably start on that job uh, later in the week because I just have a few other cars that came in uh, that I'm going to show you now. So the first car we have is a NA Miata. Uh, it's an old friend of mine's, so the slave cylinder started leaking. And unfortunately, it goes slave cylinder, hard line, and then a soft line. He bought the soft line, but the hard line, I need to order that because he started rounding off the nut, the flare nut on the slave. So I'm gonna have to leave this sitting here for a while. I also have to check his rear diff if it's leaking. And I think one of the, I think it's the driver's side rear brake is binding up. So a little bit of a weird Miata content might be happening in a bit. Uh, but so that got dropped off. And then right now I have this 2.8 A4 that's, that I did um, a bunch of work to before. So he's back now. Uh, a little bit of an oil change and I'm replacing one of the motor mount sway bar brackets on his original mount one of these studs broke off so the sway bar was only being partially held on so swapping in that doing the oil change uh, and just giving it a quick check there's a lot of leaks on this car nothing too too crazy but uh, it is pretty rough in that sense uh, hopefully this might be another candidate for a V8 swap so maybe in the winter you might see this one pop up again and we'll be doing some cool stuff to it. So guys, that's it for this week's video. Finished up the blue car. Actually got another uh, car in, but I'll talk about that in the next video. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and our website. Uh, the links are in the description. And thanks for watching till the end. See you in the next one.